Hello, I'm JW, and this is part three of the Variac repair series. In this episode, we'll be reassembling the device and fitting the various new components which I've obtained. So we'll start by having a look at some of those new parts, and then we'll do a quick time lapse of the uh, reinstallation and reassembly of the device. Now, there's a few holes in the front panel, so I thought it'd be a handy idea if we fitted a switch to it. This is one of these uh, rotary type things and you can actually put a uh, padlock through the holes to lock it in position as well. It's actually a three pole uh, switch but uh, we'll just be using it as a two pole switch in this application. Now the brushes were damaged so uh, I've managed to obtain some new brushes. There's two there, both the same. They actually just bolt into the little metal holders on the Variac itself. Now there's two holes in the front which these glands will fit into. These are actually PG-11s which happily fit into the holes which are three quarter of an inch in size. And of course to go with those there's the uh, lock nuts to go on the back. We actually need two of these but uh, they come in packs of five so we'll uh, I don't use those for something else at a later date. Uh, for the internal wiring we've got some of these ring terminals. These are sized uh, quite large because they have to fit over the uh, rather big terminals inside the device and it's just a crimp on connection for the wiring. Also be replacing all of that wiring inside. Uh, the input and output will just be a length of uh, three core flex. Here's a socket to go on the end of that and there'll be a corresponding plug to go on the uh, input side of course. Now the screws that hold the whole thing together were a bit of a mixture of three or four different styles and types and some of them didn't actually fit. So I've got a whole bag here of new ones uh, it turned out that whoever had uh, put the others in had uh, used some metric sizes which were similar to these. These are actually imperial, I think they're 2BA uh, thread, but these fit perfectly. Someone had obviously gone and used 5mm which looks similar, but of course it's not the same and therefore doesn't actually fit particularly well, although you can ram them in there. And the final component is the uh, new wheel. Now the original one was some kind of black plastic which had a big crack right through the middle of it, so I've obtained this uh, metal wheel. It also has this uh, handle that can just screw into the uh, hole there, which uh, is sort of an optional feature. I may or may not use that. And so this is actually cast metal, probably steel or iron or something. Now we'll just cut out the uh, hole in the middle to fit appropriately and uh, fix that onto the existing spindle. Yeah, just putting the actual insulation rings back onto the spindle there. They're actually made of a hard plastic or a phenolic type material. That's just some grease I'm putting there because the original grease had dried up so I've cleaned it off and uh, put some new grease on. It's actually rather tedious and difficult to get the uh, brush holders in the exact right position there so uh, it does require quite a lot of adjustment and uh, faffing around. So I've just had to unscrew them again and uh, make a few more minor adjustments to the contacts and the spring there. Obviously if these are in the wrong position it will uh, cause them to uh, not contact the top of the transformer correctly. Just cleaning the top of the uh, windings there. Putting a bit of grease on the bottom there that will actually go into the uh, base of the device. And then obviously it will just fit over the top like that with those three screws on each side to secure it. That strap coming across there is the output from the variable contact. And again, as with the brushes and other things, it's rather tiresome and tedious to get the various components all properly aligned and level with relation to each other. That front terminal board uh, is quite handy because it provides the correct spacing between the top and bottom plate. And I'm still just trying to adjust the uh, brushes and the uh, wiring inside there to make sure it's absolutely correct. And I've just got to alter one of the uh, wires here, this little braided wire which has to go under the spring rather than over it otherwise it has to bind on the arm that comes across for the contact so I just have to alter that there. And just fixing the contact there. Now here we've got the base uh, which has been repainted in that red colour trying that out for the correct fit. Those three bolts go in the bottom and then the whole thing just bolts onto the rather substantial base plate. The sides are a much thinner sheet metal which uh, obviously is much easier to uh, fit on there and that just holds the whole thing together. 
that's those new bolts there. I'm putting the uh, cable glands into the case there. That terminal board on the left there isn't actually going to be used, it's just purely there to hold the case together at the top and the bottom. These are the new bolts which are the 2BA rather than the 5mm. They go in reasonably well, although this particular top one here is a bit of a bother because the thread had been previously damaged, so it uh, just needs a bit of uh, adjustment to get it to go in and correctly fit into the metal. That's all assembled, and uh, this is the top plate. Just put a bit of silicone and lubricant on the back so it doesn't stick onto the top of the cabinet. And it just fixes with the three screws. Now here's some of the wiring. I've got this blue uh, PVC flex, 1.5mm uh, size, three core obviously, just wiring it uh, at the end there into that plug. As the plug has a fuse in it, I'm not going to use the fuse inside the Variac because that would obviously be redundant, so uh, it's just wired directly through into the uh, device itself. I'm just doing the other end there, which obviously will fit through the cable glands and then be secured with that nut on the outside. And of course the same thing needs to be done with the other length of flex. This is a treading socket, that's the instructions. If you wanted to read that you'll have to go back and pause the video. And again that fits in in a very similar fashion. And then the cover just goes on. And again the wire goes through the hole as before. Just using the top hole for the output there. Quite handy that those holes were already there as it obviously didn't mean to have to cut any new ones. Now just paying the end of these wires, uh, putting these crimp terminals on. Just a matter of stripping the wire to the proper length, putting the uh, terminal over and then uh, crimping it with the proper crimping tool there. And now I'm just going to try and fit them into the uh, relevant terminals on the back there. I haven't done the switch on the top at this point, so uh, I'll actually do that later and that's just involve uh, cutting the uh, line and neutral input wires and routing them to either side of the switch. So, so just doing this uh, to get some of the terminals sorted. Here's the internal wiring of the device. So I've got the two flexes that come in via the glands here, input and output. Uh, the bottom one here is the input, comes in here, and the line of neutral goes straight into the one side of the rotary switch. Uh, the line of neutral come out of the other side of the switch. And uh, both the neutral go to the same terminal here. Uh, they're both actually common, but uh, I've just put them on the same terminal there. And the uh, line input here, going over to terminal four, Line output, of course, here is on the sliding contact. So in this configuration, uh, this end, obviously, the voltage output will be zero. That will vary up to the uh, 240 at that position. And when the slider goes all the way to the end, that will be the uh, 270. Earth wires all connect through to the central point. Uh, the two input and output ones actually go around the back. We'll show you that in a moment. And we've got an additional one here just connecting through there onto this uh, metal top frame. And again, that goes around the back to the other side where they all connect. And you can just see this up here at the top, I've attached another one actually to the metal spindle from the handle as well. So I'll turn this around, have a look at the other side and see where those connect. This is the earthing arrangement and this has actually been altered from the original design which just had a single wire going to some point on the side of this metal frame. So what we have is, I'm using this uh, terminal block here, these are actually already common together so it's just convenient to use that uh, as the earth terminal. Uh, not actually using these other terminals because that was not particularly necessary. Uh, the two wires here are the ones from the flex, so the incoming and the outgoing. So those are both connected directly on here. Hence that means that the uh, incoming and outgoing wires are permanently connected there. That of course is connected over here at all times. And we've got uh, two wires coming off of this. Uh, this one at the top goes up to the uh, frame there with that screw. Again, that will connect to the whole of the uh, metal frame. And then this lower wire is that one that goes around to the other side and then connects onto that fixture, basically onto the top of this frame here. In addition to that, we've got the wire here, which is uh, fairly long, and I've actually attached that in there to the center of the spindle because on the original design, the handle and the spindle wasn't actually connected to earth, even though the spindle is actually metal and the pointer is metal. 
Uh, the hand we've got now is also metal, although the original one was plastic, but uh, even so the uh, point and spindle were of course metal and should have been earthed. And that wire comes across from there and it actually goes down to the bottom here, just out of the frame there. Again that connects to the uh, metal frame of the device. So we've got multiple earthing points there, both to the uh, frame uh, or chassis as it were itself, the actual variac inside and of course uh, all connected through to the incoming and outgoing wires at the same time. This is just the detail of the earth connection I've added to the centre spindle there. Basically just a screw into the uh, metal shaft there and a uh, crimped on connection which then connects to this uh, earth wire here going off to the metal casing. Here's a view of the uh, new brushes which are fitted in there. As you can see uh, it's down in there the uh, two brushes side by side and of course they are considerably longer than the other ones which were virtually worn down to a little tiny fraction of what they should be. So there's the new ones and they're all connected via these uh, braided wires here and the same over that side. That just goes into the metal holder on the top there and then that just uh, holds the brush in place with a sort of screw mechanism in the middle. It's two holders, one uh, next to each other, and that's for the uh, Dura track. The thing is, it's actually got two brushes, uh, so it's effectively uh, two tracks all the way around. And then the pressure on the back is just put on by these metal springs, which you just press onto the back of the uh, brush holders there. This whole uh, metal piece here is actually live and connected to the contact, so the piece above is earthed, so there's, uh, it's just purely a question of clearance between the two, hence the uh, braided wires need to go underneath the uh, springs there rather than uh, on the top. And the output from the middle, or this piece, goes from the centre in there via this uh, strap here. So it just comes up and over and then that connects over to the terminal board on this side, actually via the uh, stud on the back there. Here's the top view of the uh, finished device. Uh, actually I put the uh, 0 to 100% scale on there, the other one is just on the back of that plate. Uh, that was a bit scratched so I put the uh, better one on. And as you can see the knob, uh, or the new handle just rotates around there. No problem at all. I'll well, just fix this through the centre with that uh, screw there. There is actually another handle which will fit in there, like a sort of short thing there, but uh, I'm not going to use that as it would just get in the way. I've added a switch here. There was actually a hole there which presumably was some sort of switch in the past but I've added this square switch which is one of these uh, quarter turn things and you can actually put a padlock through the hole there to uh, lock it in the off position if necessary. And the two holes on the side were already there. They're actually uh, three quarter inch holes so these uh, PG11 glands fitted perfectly there and it also avoids having to drill new holes and of course uses up the holes that we've got. Uh, the rest of the casing did paint up fairly well and I've replaced all of the uh, fixing screws as uh, half of the ones that came with were the wrong size and even the ones at the correct size were in a pretty bad condition and all the heads have been chewed and destroyed. So all we need to do is just put the side covers back on and uh, it'll be finished and it's ready for some testing. So that's the uh, reassembly completed. Uh, in the next video we'll be doing the electrical testing obviously to ensure the device is safe and it does actually work as intended. And that will be the final part, uh, which obviously will be part four. So until that time, thanks for watching.